For over half a century, Toyota's Hilux pickup has powered people to this planet's most remote locations, tackling every type of terrain and overcoming almost every kind of obstacle. This much improved take on the 8th generation version has been significantly updated with a classier cabin and the option of a gutsier 2.8 liter engine. But don't worry, it's as tough as ever. Think of a pickup and it's quite likely that you'll be picturing a Toyota Hilux. This model has, after all, been a dominant presence in the global pickup market for around half a century. Well over 18 million examples of this truck have been produced in that time and most of them are still pounding the roads and the unmade tracks of the 172 countries across the world where this model is sold. This 8th generation version was launched in 2015 but five years on got a hugely significant upgrade to create the vehicle that we're going to look at here. Hugely significant is anything but an understatement. This Hilux has been available in the UK since 72, but never in a really powerful form. Prior to this update, the only engine choice on offer was a single 2.4 litre four cylinder unit with just 148 bhp. Yet it sells in the market where 70% of sales go to pickups with at least 175 bhp. So, job one for the second facelift applied to this AN123 130 series design was to offer a more powerful engine option without introducing efficiency downsides that would make the sale of such a variant unviable. The four cylinder 2.8 litre engine that's now optional for Hilux customers claims to be able to deliver on that brief. We'll see. The other market trend previous versions of this model failed to properly satisfy is that for lifestyle customers. It's easy enough for a pickup model to offer a top variant pimped up with leather and bull bars, but much more difficult to provide the properly car like cabin and the decent tarmac driving dynamics that customers really want. Nevertheless, we're told that the Hilux can now deliver on that brief too, and that's a claim that we'll also be investigating in this test. Perhaps what was most important, though, was that Toyota made all those improvements without compromising on this model's legendary toughness, reliability and practicality. This, after all, was the vehicle that Jeremy Clarkson and Top Gear drowned, threw from the top of a tower block and still drove home. It was the first vehicle to be driven to both the North and the South Poles. It's conquered the Antarctic, the slopes of live volcanoes and the gruelling Paris Dakar rally. It is, in short, for everyone from suburban builders to Libyan freedom fighters, a pickup trusted the world over to get the job done. And that's why it is still Europe's best selling model in this segment. Toyota reassures us that we should have no concerns about compromise here. On the contrary, changes have been made to make the Hilux even more unstoppable off road and it can still take a ton of payload and tow up to 3.5 tons. It is, in other words, even more of a proper Hilux than ever, as we're about to find out. The big change here is that at last, Hilux owners get the option of a decently powerful engine, the optional 201 brake horsepower 2.8 litre diesel we're gonna try here which joins the range to sell alongside the existing 148 bhp 2.4 litre diesel unit. That is a significant change, but it's only one of the things that's made a big change to the way that this Toyota pickup drives. Once upon a time, the driving experience the pickup offered didn't really matter much, providing the truck in question could conquer the outback, uh, carry a whole pallet's worth of paving slabs, and if need be, offer enough pulling power to undertake astounding feats like uh, tugging a locomotive from its shed. Things have changed though, and this eighth generation Hilux has had to adapt itself to suit this shift. At this model's original launch in 2015, its leaf springs were lengthened and they were moved further apart, plus a thicker anti-roll bar and larger shock absorber cylinders were also added. But it wasn't enough and prior to the launch of this updated model, five years on, this Hilux, although it's still imperious off-road thanks to its tough 
ladder frame chassis continued to offer one of the cruder tarmac driving experiences in the pickup segment, which was an issue. For today's typical lifestyle orientated pickup owner, there's not much point in being able to conquer Snowden if the vehicle in question can't also conquer the school run potholes of Surbiton. Hence the further changes that were made here. This is the first Hilux ever made whose rear leaf springs and shock absorbers haven't been tuned with a full load in place out back. Now that might sound a small difference in approach, but for Toyota, it really wasn't. For the first time here, we have chassis dynamics predominantly based around this pickup doing what it wasn't primarily designed to do, function like an ordinary car. And for chief engineer Hiroki Nakajima and his Hilux engineering team, that represented a huge change of emphasis. So, what have they done in response? Well, there's nothing radical here, so don't expect the kind of coil-sprung rear suspension that gives the rival Nissan Navara class-leading ride quality. Toyota and most Hilux owners too, one suspects, want to stay with the leaf-sprung arrangement, which allows this truck to take a cargo bay full of gravel while conquering the Eiger. But they have done everything possible to fine-tune it. The leaf springs and their associated rear shackle bushes have been completely redesigned and at the same time the shock absorbers have been retuned. In addition, the engineers have further tweaked the clever pitch and bounce control system. Now that uh, automatically adjusts engine torque in response to road surface conditions. Now this works with wheel speed sensors which determine uh, when the vehicle's nose is lifting or dropping because of undulations in the road. Uh, so when a bump or a dip is detected, engine torque is momentarily reduced to compensate and that tends to minimize passenger head toss as a result. Often with suspension update packages of this sort, it's really hard to notice a real world difference in the finished result, but the changes here really do make a difference, uh, providing you, your point of reference is the pickup norm or the previous version of this model. Uh, despite the more SUV-like interior of this improved Hilux, you really still wouldn't mistake it for any kind of SUV. Uh, you still crash over speed humps and there's still the kind of fidgety feel over really bad bumps and ruts that you'd only really get from a pickup. What's different is that over merely poor and made surfaces, much of the um, harshness that was present before has been largely eradicated and that will make uh, the overall driving experience served up here much more acceptable to drivers who are making the switch from an ordinary car. Changes to the steering help too. Uh, the tiller on a typical pickup tends to be about as accurate as the rudder on a channel ferry, but this one is much better courtesy of the adoption of a new variable flow control pump. It makes the steering lighter during parking or during urban driving for easier maneuverability, but it gives a bit more weight at faster speeds for better control and driver confidence. Again, it's not enough to give the impression of being in a land cruiser, but there is a genuinely useful improvement which existing owners will particularly notice around twisting secondary roads. On these kind of routes, uh, as ever with a pickup, there's plenty of body roll and the rear end can hop about a bit if you start throwing this Toyota about through the sharp curves and roundabouts, but get a bit of weight in the cargo bay and the handling feels more assured. Enough with that, you'll want to know about the diesels on offer beneath the bonnet, both of which can be had with a choice of six-speed manual or automatic transmission. Uh, the important change, as we said earlier, is the introduction of the freshly installed uh, 2.8-litre unit that we're trying here, which some other markets did get with the original version of this eighth-generation design. Now, assuming that you uh, want one of the plusher trim levels, we don't really understand why you wouldn't specify this engine over the continuing 2.4 litre diesel. After all, the price premium is minimal and there's no efficiency downside of the kind that in recent times has sounded the death knell for V6 power plants in this segment. This 2.8 is still a four-cylinder D4D powertrain, but with 201 brake horsepower at its disposal, it manages over a third more shove than the 148 brake horsepower 2.4 litre diesel and knocks a hefty 2.7 seconds off the 0 to 62 miles an hour sprint time, which for this top unit is rated at 10.1 seconds or 10.7 seconds for the smooth shifting auto. On the move in a 2.8 litre Hilux, your first impressions are that you take in the gruff bluff engine note 
and the fact that uh, not a great deal happens until you give the throttle quite a firm prod. Neither issue turning out to be particularly significant. Uh, the engine note calms down at highway speeds uh, where this truck is actually surprisingly refined given the kind of aerodynamics that would characterize a barn door. And the throttle calibration, that is intentional. It's tuned to make towing and off-roading easy. Uh, you're quite likely to want the auto gearbox that we're trying here, possibly because um, with this transmission, torque rises from the 420 newton meter uh, that's applicable to stick shift to 500 newton meters. It's Toyota's Super ECT, super intelligent electronically controlled setup, which the brand has fiddled with here to give an expanded lockup range in fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. That improves response to throttle inputs, and sure enough, uh, there is a slightly more direct feeling of acceleration than we remember before. Whatever your transmission and engine choice in this Hilux, you get a drive mode switch, which offers a simple choice of eco or power settings. The latter is essential with the base 2.4 litre engine if you're going to get anywhere near uh, that unit's best possible 12.7 second, not to 62 miles an hour acceleration time. Those bluff aerodynamics restrict the top speed quite a lot, of course. It's 106 miles an hour for the 2.4 and 109 for the 2.8. Bear in mind, though, that in scrubbing off all that speed, there's a lot of weight, nearly 2.3 tonnes, for the anchors to have to stop. Uh, there are ventilated discs at the front and drum brakes at the rear. We think their action could be a little more decisive, especially for a vehicle that's legally able to carry over a tonne out back. Uh, what we need to finish with here is a briefing of this Toyota's unbettered off-road ability, which has been even further enhanced with this updated model. Before going into the latest updates, let's give you the all-wheel drive setup basics. Hilux models have only had four-wheel drive since 1979, but since then, this vehicle has established itself as the pickup to beat in the rough stuff. It uses a part-time four-wheel drive system that operates in rear-driven two-wheel drive on tarmac, but you can shift on the move into the H4 high-range four-wheel drive setting at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour should conditions worsen or you be about to turn onto a muddy track. For really boggy off-road work, though, you're going to want to further consider the possibility of switching into L4 low range. Again, that's something that is possible on the move, but this time only at uh, much lower speeds of up to five miles an hour. Once that's engaged, you can really start thinking about going almost anywhere. Uh, to keep all the wheels turning at the same speed, there's a front differential which is disconnected when you're in two-wheel drive and a high-capacity locking rear limited slip differential. In addition, an active traction control system uses brake fluid pressure and engine control to distribute torque to all four wheels. And it senses when one or more wheels loses traction and then brakes them while simultaneously redistributing drive torque to the wheels that do have grip. As for the latest updates, uh, well, the key improvement lies in the addition of a new automatic electronic control system, which uh, replicates the effect of a mechanical limited slip differential to give better traction and acceleration on low grip surfaces. Other off-road enhancements are of the detail sort, but they remain significant nevertheless. As before, this Toyota can manage steep ascents and descents with the engine barely above idling. Uh, that uh, tick over speed has been lowered from 850 RPM to 680 RPM. Accelerator response when shifting from L4 low range has also been retuned, again to give the driver a touch more control. Plus, Toyota has also updated the VSC stability system for better off-road tractional response. And they've added a new tyre angle dash monitor to help you to keep better track of where the front wheels are pointed. As a result, it's even easier to look heroic when you're driving this truck off-piste. The wheel articulation is genuinely remarkable, as are the possible approach and departure angles, uh, respectively 29 and 26 degrees for this double cab model. Plus, with this body style, uh, you can expect to find a class-leading 310 millimeters of ground clearance too, which makes possible a wading depth of up to 700 mils. And when all the off-road stuff's finished, well, as you shift back from four to two-wheel drive, Toyota's clever ADD automatic disconnecting differential system will automatically cut in. 
it's able to either engage or disengage the front axle drivetrain, supposedly contributing to fuel efficiency and lower noise levels on tarmac. At this point, you're going to be more interested in things like turning circle, and Toyota likes to think that that is relatively tight, 6.7 meters wall-to-wall, tightening to 6.4 meters between curbs. This might be good for a pickup, but it'll feel enormous if you jump straight out of an SUV. What's important here is that the gap between those two genres has been further narrowed, and that might just be enough to make a whole new generation of uh, customers take a fresh look at this Hilux. The Hilux looks quite a bit more aggressive these days. This enhanced version of the eighth generation design especially so. Some pickups uh, look a little silly when they're all fashioned up, but we think that this one assumes exactly the right balance of style and solidity, especially in this double cab guys, a body style which will far outsell the alternative single cab and extra cab variants. At a glance, you know that this pickup's going to be tough and capable, but at the same time, you wouldn't hesitate to park it amongst the crossovers outside the local gym. This delicate balance of aesthetic excess is exemplified here at the front. Traditional Hilux design cues like this clamshell bonnet, which wraps over the wheel arches, continue, but now combine with fashionable touches like this redesigned three-dimensional front grille. Its prominence on this top spec variant is emphasized by black bulbar style trimming, uh, which extends down into the skid plate. Lesser Hilux grades stick with the more traditional silvered pickup bling. Uh, full LED headlights now feature further up the range and further down, restyled fog lights sit in this revised bumper and are supposed to reinforce the solid, stable stance. And in profile, well, there is a cohesive sense of style here in contrast to so many pickups, which look as if the cab area has been merely glued together with the cargo bay. Uh, the smooth belt line helps in this regard, as does the careful finishing around the rear slanted passenger compartment there. Uh, this blacked out central pillar, for example. We also like the aerodynamic V shape of the cab roof that helps to channel airflow away from the sides of the vehicle rather than onto the deck where it would generate drag against the tailgate, of course. Uh, this top spec variant gets emphasized chunky black wheel arches filled with big 18-inch alloys. Lesser Hiluxes get more restrained arches with 17-inch rims. Either way, this Toyota should make the required styling statement. Even at the rear, the attention to detail continues. Uh, the smarter lamp clusters have been restyled. They are now LED lit in top variants and they incorporate aero stabilizing fins. But of course, of more importance, is the stuff that you can't see, and that of course remains unaltered, this being a facelift rather than a complete redesign. Few changes were really needed. Uh, Toyota remains committed to the kind of tough ladder frame chassis that some rivals have lately dispensed with. And back in 2015, at the launch of this Mark 8 AN120 130 series design, this platform's torsional rigidity was increased by 20% and combined with frame side rails and cross members which were made 30 millimeters thicker. The result is a body structure that remains well equipped to cope with anything that you can throw at it. Enough for uh, decades of sturdy service? Well, you can certainly bet on that. Let's take a seat at the wheel. Uh, there's something about climbing aboard a Hilux that makes you come overall Crocodile Dundee. In the cab, things are much as before. There's dual tone leather upholstery, ambient lighting, and JBL dash top speakers on this top spec model. But even at the top of the range, hard wearing plastics on the dashboard and on the door cards remind you that this is very much a working vehicle. Although Toyota has tried to lift things with brushed metal effect trim and piano black plastic. It's not enough to make much difference to the utilitarian ambiance of the lower order models. And we could do without the dash tops, shiny finish and fake plastic stitching. Still, overall, the effect is still reasonably polished by utilitarian pickup standards.
If your experience of Hilux models dates back to the pre-2015 Mark 7 design, you'll appreciate this 8th generation model's more supportive seats and extra leg, head and shoulder room. And perhaps also the redesigned air conditioning system, the shorter gear stick and the fact that the wheel adjusts for reach as well as rake, making it easier to get comfortable. Uh, familiar from older models is this useful power heat button that warms the engine up more quickly on cold mornings. Switches on the thick rimmed multifunction steering wheel allow you to flick quickly through the various functions of the trip computer and you access that via the 4.2 inch TFT multi information display that sits between the two blue backlit dials. Uh, this little screen also includes various eco functions and even a compass and the display is designed so that the most important information appears at the top closest to the driver's line of sight. As for cabin practicality, well, all models get a double glove box, the upper part of which is cooled and can hold two half-litre bottles. Plus, there's a large lidded storage box between the seats, which includes an optional 220-volt power point. Uh, you'll find a compartment for your sunglasses just above the windscreen here, along with two cup holders in front of the gear stick and two 12-volt sockets, a USB port and an aux in point just above it. Another cup holder can be pulled out on the right hand side of the fascia and each of the door pockets on the front here can hold a one litre plastic bottle. Plus there's a useful tray at the bottom of the centre stack which will be ideal for your mobile phone. In addition there are grab handles in the A pillars and each front seat has a flip down hook on the back to hang your takeaway on. Time to take a seat in the back. Now in theory, the exterior sill bars and side steps you get on plusher models like this one ought to help when you're getting in or out. But in practice, the narrowness of the ledge just makes the whole process awkward, especially if you happen to be wearing working boots. And inside, well here the rear seat still has a useful 60-40 split tip-up function so that valuable things like tools can be kept away from prying eyes. Annoyingly, although uh, base spec active models do without that feature. As for actually sitting back here, well, no double cab pickup offers rear seated passengers a really luxurious travelling experience, but this one meets the admittedly mediocre class standard in this regard. Until the arrival of this 8th generation Hilux design in 2015, the middle back seat occupant didn't get a proper three point belt, which was completely unacceptable. That oversight was corrected at the launch of this Mark 8 model, or at least it was, providing you choose a Hilux above entry level trim. Uh, base spec active models have to do without any kind of central rear belt at all. Uh, this rear bench was redesigned back in 2015 to give more thigh and back support, so medium length journeys back here are okay. You wouldn't want to have to endure anything much longer though. At least the central transmission tunnel is reasonably low and relatively thin front seat backs free up more space for your knees. If there are only two of you, you can fill down this uh, central armrest with its integrated cup holders. There are no connectivity points back here or climate controls, but you get large grab handles in the B pillars and ice fix fastenings on the bench. So let's guide you through range structure and the value proposition here. As you'd expect, the bulk of the lineup is based around this double cab body shape, and there are four trim levels on offer Active, Icon, Invincible, and this top Invincible X variant. Pricing for the double cab body shape, which of course is the one that virtually all customers will want, starts from around £24,000 once you've claimed back the VAT, as most business customers will, of course, be able to do. A few key things, you'll have to stretch at least as far as invincible spec to get the option of upgrading from the base 2.4 litre diesel to the 2.8 litre diesel power plant we've been trying here. That engine upgrade costs only around £400, which to our eyes makes it a bit of a no-brainer. Both power plants can be ordered with automatic transmission for an extra payment of around £1,250. That's providing you avoid base active trim. The double cab range price starting point we just quoted only gets you base active trim. A more realistic range starting point price is just under £27,000, which gets you that mid-range icon trim. 
As we said though, uh, you'll need to stretch at least as far as the nicer Invincible spec if you're going to have the option of choosing that 2.8 litre diesel that we'd recommend. So for that, you'll have to budget from around £30,000. Uh, add on to that figure a further £3,000 premium if you want this top Invincible X trim and that only comes with a large engine. Got it? Good. Unlike some of its competitors, Toyota does continue to offer variants who suit those who purely want this Hilux to be a working vehicle. Uh, within the base active grade, you can save a little on the entry level price that we just quoted by choosing from a couple of two-door body shapes, uh, either the two-seat single cab or the extra cab body style, which has an occasional use bench uh, behind the front chairs. For conversions, there are also chassis cab body versions of the extra cab and this double cab available. On to the value proposition that Toyota's pricing here delivers. Now, the brand's never tried to offer the cheapest option in the segment, but if you look at what you get in terms of equipment and capability, the Hilux does appear at first glance to represent pretty good value. As for rivals, well, the market has shrunk a bit since this eighth-generation version of this Toyota was first launched at the end of 2015. Since then, the Fit Fullback, the Great Wall Steed, the Volkswagen Amarok and the Mercedes X-Class have all been discontinued, while Renault and the PSA Group changed their minds at the last minute about entering this market segment with rebadged versions of other people's designs. Which leaves, well, what? Uh, assuming you don't want the budget brand drawbacks of the sector's cheapest pickup, that's the Sangyong Musso, then you'll be joining the majority of buyers who find themselves uh, considering this Hilux alongside the four other really key pickup class contenders, namely Mitsubishi's L200, Nissan's Navara, Ford's Ranger and Isuzu's D-Max. Pricing with these four is pretty comparable to a Hilux. A Ranger will cost you a fraction more, but it offers more power from its base engine. The other three will save you a thousand pounds or so, but there's not a huge amount in it once you equalize specs and so on. If you want a really powerful pickup, something to match the pulling power of this Hilux in this 2.8 litre form, uh, then your only other option these days with the demise of the Amarok and the X-Class is the Ranger in that model's top 213 PS form. Again, the Ford will cost you slightly more than this Toyota, but it also offers more power for your cash. If, having considered all that, you conclude it is this Toyota that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Toyota's been with that standard specification. So let's take a look at that now. Entry level active badged Hilux variants are pretty basic, but even they include items that industrial users might be rather pleasantly surprised by. Uh, I'm talking about things like Bluetooth phone compatibility, air conditioning, which cools the front storage box, auto headlamps and powered heated door mirrors. Plus, there's a 12 volt power outlet and a 4.2 inch display between the dials in the instrument binnacle. Active spec also gets a rear differential lock and HAC, hill start assist control for setting off up steep slopes. We do think though it's a bit mean in this day and age for the brand not to include a DAB radio on active models. Plus at that level in the range, you can't adjust the height of the driver's seat either. And there are some features lacking on the rear bench and that can't seat a middle person or be tipped up to reveal extra storage. Toyota does though now give base spec customers tailgate locking at this level and as you'd want on any pickup there is also an engine immobiliser and a full size spare wheel plus even active spec Hiluxes also get the full suite of Toyota Safety Sense camera safety features. Now we're going to brief you on those in a moment. Move on up to Icon trim and your Hilux will start to look a little more sophisticated. And that's courtesy of features like dark grey, six spoke, 17 inch alloy wheels, LED front fog lamps, uh, rear privacy glass, side steps and headlamp cleaners. Uh, from this point in the range, all versions of this Toyota get an automatic limited slip differential and slightly ironically, given that from this level upwards, uh, this Hilux will be less likely to be seriously used off-road, an extra off-piste feature, DAC, downhill assist control for slippery slopes. 
Inside, Icon Spec variants get the latest version of the brand's Toyota Touch 2 multimedia fascia screen, uh, via which you can access a six-speaker DAB audio system, a reversing camera, and smartphone integration, supporting Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Other additions at this level include more tarmac-orientated highway terrain tyres, a leather covering for the gear stick and the steering wheel, premium dark fabric upholstery and those three missing active spec seat features, a height adjustable driver's chair, a third rear middle seat belt and a tip-up feature for that rear bench. Ideally though, private buyers and self-employed owners are more likely to want to stretch to one of the top two trim variants, not least because that's what you'll have to do if you'd like to have the option of paying extra for the larger 2.8 litre engine we've been talking about. Invincible spec probably includes most of what you'll be looking for. A uh, Hilux Invincible would come with machine-faced 18-inch alloy wheels, uh, dual-beam projector LED headlights with automatic levelling, LED tail lights, scuff plates, all-round parking sensors, a windscreen wiper de-icing element, heated front seats and automatic air conditioning. If you want, uh, well, almost everything, this top Invincible X variant provides it with a unique exterior look which includes these black finished 18 inch alloy wheels and a black finish for the bulba like trim around the grille which extends down towards the front scuff plate. Inside with an Invincible X there are extra niceties like dual tone black leather upholstery, navigation and ambient door panel blue lighting. Perhaps the highlight Invincible X feature though is a nine speaker JBL premium sound audio system with an eight channel amp, a 244 millimeter subwoofer and Harman Clarify technology which optimizes the quality of compressed digital audio files. Onto options, you'll almost certainly want to add a tow bar, either a ball and pin one or a flanged one. And for the load bay, you'd be wise to specify some sort of bed liner there are plastic, spray-on and aluminium liners available. A sliding deck floor and a utility box are available for the cargo area. And you may well want to uh, include a hard top or a roll cover over the load bay. Both, of course, are available. A soft roll cover is offered, but you'll probably want a shutter-style one uh, offered in either aluminium or black, with or without chrome or black sports bars, which can also be ordered separately. Other predictable extras include an alarm, which ought to be standard, uh, floor mats in textile or rubber, a dash cam and a reversing camera. Onto aesthetics, you'll almost certainly want to pay your Toyota dealer more for your choice of paint colour, probably one of the metallic hues, like the Titan bronze shade we have here, then that shade is new to the standard range, as is scorched orange. If you want to spend more, there's also an extra cost pearlescent white pearl finish available too. Uh, if you want to trend up your Hilux, and of course you can, uh, avoid base active trim, which can be embellished with 17 inch alloy wheels, and you can add 18 inch matte black alloy wheels. Uh, there are chrome or black sidebars available. And if you really want to wow the teenagers in your local shopping mall car park on a Saturday night, well, then you can add amber LED strobes on the front grille and the rear pillars, and possibly also the visibility pack. And that adds Chapter 8 chevrons onto the tailgate and the side stripe, plus a mini LED light bar on the cab roof. Maybe that looks better than it sounds. If your Hilux will have a working life ahead of it, you'll be more interested in options like the Mesh Master Kit. Now that gives you cargo side panels to cab height, mesh infills and rear barn doors with HD locking gears, plus 270 degree hinges and holdbacks. On the rare single cab and extra cab variants, commercial operators may also want to consider drop side and tipper conversions. Enough with options, what about safety? Well, at the original launch of this eighth generation Hilux, we were disappointed to find that the Toyota Safety Sense package of camera safety features was only fitted to the two top Invincible models, which is why Euro NCAP could only award this model a three out of five star rating. Well, good sense has now prevailed and all the Toyota Safety Sense features are now standard across the range. Now this pack bundles together four key radar-driven safety elements. The most significant one of those is autonomous braking. 
Toyota calls it set up a pre-collision system and it has updated it to specifically allow for pedestrian and cyclist detection. As you drive, the pre-collision system scans the road ahead looking for potential collision hazards, uh, static or vehicular ones at any speed and pedestrians at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. If the setup thinks you might be in danger of hitting something, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. The Toyota Safety Sense package also includes a road sign assist feature which pictures road signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the instrument display and if fitted the Toyota Touch 2 screen. The third safety sense element is lane departure warning and that monitors the markings on the road surface and it will alert you if the vehicle starts to deviate from its lane without the turn indicators operating. At the same time, gently applying steering input to help to maintain the correct course. Uh, finally, there's also adaptive cruise control and extra safety sense addition for this revised model that will automatically slow or speed up the car at highway speeds to suit the surrounding traffic. As for more expected passive safety features, well, there are twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag. In double cab models, Isofix charge seat mountings are provided for the two outer rear seat positions, although we are disappointed to find uh, that with the base active spec, the central rear seat passenger doesn't get a proper three-point belt. At the original launch of this Mark 8 model uh, back in 2015, Toyota increased the strength of this pickup's ladder frame chassis by 20% uh, to help the vehicle withstand collisions more effectively. Also, the risk of pedestrian injury was reduced by the use of impact absorbing structures in the front bumper, the bonnet, the fender bracket structure and the cowl, reducing the impact force to the head and legs of pedestrians in a collision. As for the basic electronic stuff, well, there's ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective. Uh, plus, there's a feature that'll flash the brake lights in emergency stops to warn following motorists. You'll get a vehicle stability control system. Uh, in addition, for towers, there's the peace of mind of a further driver assist feature, trailer sway control. Now here, when crosswinds, variations in the road surface or driver steering inputs provoke trailer sway, braking and engine output control will automatically be introduced to suppress the movement before it becomes uncontrollable. Uh, other electronic Hilux driving aids include several particularly aimed at helping you when you're off-road. Uh, these are things like active traction control, downhill assist control and hill start assist control. Time to focus on cargo bay practicality. Uh, nothing's changed here with the updated version of this 8th generation model, but if you're new to this pickup or you need a refresher, then you'll need us to talk you through how it all works back here. Uh, now, if your experience of Hilux models dates back to before this current design was launched in 2015, then you'll appreciate the way that the cargo bay design was changed to make it easier to get to this loading area thanks to a steel bumper set lower to the ground, allowing for a deeper step to be fitted. As the tailgate, well, we're pleased to see that Toyota has now made it lockable, uh, but across the range, even with base active spec, it's fitted with strong link type hinges with support from heavy duty steel plate brackets when in the open position. As for the bay itself, well, it remains one of the wider ones in the segment with a maximum deck width measuring 1,645 millimetres. That's significantly more than you get in, say, a Nissan Navara or a Mitsubishi L200, so it'll be uh, easily enough for even the widest Euro pallets. Uh, this Hilux also provides 480 millimetres of loading deck height and 1,525 mils of loading deck length. That's a figure that rises to 1,810 if you go for the extra cab or as much as 2,315 mils if you go for the single cab body style. As for the weight that you can carry, well, in active guys, this double cab can take a payload of up to 1,030 kilos, 
All right, so that is around 125 kilos less than you'll get in the Nissan Navara, but it's still ample for most owners. Uh, the extra cab, uh, that payload is 1,000 kilos, while for the single cab, it's 1,030. Uh, now, while we're talking about pickup load beds, how many times have you seen them disfigured by dents and dings? Here, to try to minimize that, at the original launch of this Mark III model, the deck was strengthened to reduce deformation. Uh, the floor ribs were redesigned and sill cross members were added to the floor panel. Uh, four tie down points are provided here, two on each of the side walls. And to embellish things, well, as you'd expect, you can add on a full hard top if you want it. Or perhaps you might need some sort of load bay cover with or without high over sports bars. Well, if that's the case, then there are various hard tonneau covers that you could choose from. Or perhaps you might want to go for a lockable aluminium roller cover instead. Uh, adding sports bars behind the cab doesn't impede its operation. On to running costs, which we're going to quote based on this volume double cab body shape. Fuel and emissions efficiency is something that Toyota has rather struggled with across the various Hilux generations and continues to battle with today. Uh, perhaps you'd expect the most off-road capable pickup in the segment, which this is, not to be amongst the sector's most efficient contenders, but we are still a little disappointed to see that uh, Toyota hasn't made a bigger step forward with this revised model. We'll start by briefing you on the news that, rather counterintuitively, the larger 2.8 litre diesel engine we're trying here is about 10% cleaner and more frugal than the lesser 2.4 litre unit. Uh, perhaps that's because Toyota has had more time to work on it, and it's had to work on it because the reason that this bigger engine wasn't offered in our market before now was that it didn't meet European emissions legislation. And that's a rather astonishing oversight for a company of Toyota's size. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the 2.8 diesel units figures, which we'll quote from the WLTP cycle. That's based around the double cab body shape that almost all customers are going to want. Now, with this 2.8 litre unit fitted with a manual gearbox, uh, the official readings suggest that you should be able to manage up to 224 grams per kilometre of CO2 and up to 33.2 mpg on the combined cycle. To give you some segment perspective, that's about the same as you'll get from a rival Ford Ranger or Mitsubishi L200, but it's significantly less than you get from a comparable uh, 190 horsepower Nissan Navara. With the automatic gearbox fitted to a 2.8 litre Hilux, you're looking at up to 30 miles per gallon and 246 grams per kilometre of CO2. As we mentioned, the uh, older 2.4 litre diesel power plant doesn't do quite as well. It trails its Ford and Mitsubishi rivals in frugality and cleanliness by around 10%. With a smaller engine fitted to a manual Hilux, the WLTP figures see a combined cycle return of up to 30 mpg with typical Icon or Invincible spec. It's 29.1 mpg for base active models. As for CO2 readings for the 2.4 litre diesel, you're looking at a best of around 247 grams per kilometre for the plusher variants and up to 250 grams per kilometre for the active model. In automatic form, a 2.4 litre diesel Hilux actually does fractionally better than its manual equivalent. It records a best of up to 30.7 miles per gallon and an emissions best of up to 257 grams per kilometre. In some ways, it's surprising that these figures aren't better because an awful lot of effort went into developing that 2.4 litre D4D engine with a range of measures implemented to save weight, uh, improve combustion efficiency and to reduce friction. The turbocharger is 30% smaller than the 2.5 and 3 litre engines which featured in the old pre-2015 7th generation model. Plus a water-cooled exhaust gas recirculation setup was added along with a selective catalytic reduction system using the AdBlue additive and that's something that you have to top up beneath the bonnet. Uh, that's to remove up to 99% of all NOx emissions. Auto models also feature a clever deceleration downshift control system which optimises downshifts when decelerating to gain better fuel efficiency. A lot of that's cancelled out though by the prodigious weight necessary to maintain this Toyota's unrivaled status off-road. Top spec models tip the scales at over 2.3 tonnes. 
The efficiency figures we've quoted earlier assume that you've activated the provided eco driving mode. That's something possible by a press of the button near the handbrake. Uh, doing that tweaks the torque curve and slightly dulls the acceleration, although you won't actually notice that too much at cruising speeds. We found that activating the button makes really quite a difference too. It affects the combined consumption figure by as much as 10 miles per gallon. If you are of a mind to monitor your efficiency progress, uh, you can do that via various eco sections provided by the various cabin monitors. The Toyota Touch 2 screen on the fascia, that will give you a graphical display of your frugality in its car section. While the TFT display in the instrument binnacle has an eco indicator section. And that has an eco score feature that scores you on the frugality of your driving via start, cruise and stop criteria. There is even an eco saving feature that allows you to work out how much cash burn fuel is costing once you've keyed in the price of the diesel that's been bought. Uh, what else? Uh, the BIK tax band is 9% effective. Uh, insurance grouping seem quite high, rated between 41 and 45, depending on the variant you choose. For ownership peace of mind, the Hilux is protected by a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Now, that bet is what you'll get from Ford, but it's far from best in segment. Isuzu's D-Max comes with a five-year, 125,000-mile package, while Sangyong's Musso comes with a praiseworthy seven-year, 150,000-mile guarantee. As for service intervals, well, they're a little too frequent for our liking. Uh, it requires maintenance every year or every 10,000 miles, whichever comes first. It would be nice if the 12-month AA roadside assistance package were to be stretched to two or three years too. A three-year paintwork warranty is included and a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee too. Although, in both cases, the inside of the load bed, that's only covered for a single year. It's interesting to note that our market now buys around 20% more pickups than sports cars, a trend we expect to grow. In an era of camera speed restrictions and emissions legislation throttling the beating heart out of performance engines, customers are turning to fresh forms of weekend driving enjoyment. And the adventurous go-anywhere surf shack pickup lifestyle is undeniably appealing, as well as being tax efficient and practical. If you find that argument attractive, we think that you'll find this Toyota's interpretation of it to be particularly convincing. The changes made to this improved 8th generation model have made it a slightly more practical day-to-day -day tarmac tool, but never far below the surface is the rugged toughness that has taken this vehicle to the furthest and the most inhospitable parts of the globe. We like the looks of the smarter cabin and the well-chosen balance between a sturdy feel and a smart demeanour. Yes, Toyota could, of course, have made it even more car-like. It would certainly be nice to have the supple ride of a Nissan Navara, for example. In some ways, though, we think the Hilux works best just as it is. At heart, this is a working vehicle, and ultimately, it should always feel like one. Are there any real issues here? Well, a few. Other rivals are certainly a touch more efficient. Uh, the frugality of this model's 2.4 litre and 2.8 litre diesel engines is rather masked by this Hilux's prodigious weight. And on the subject of engines, the arrival of a 2.8 litre engine option as part of this facelift will play a particularly important role in widening this Toyota's appeal. It's difficult to understand why this power plant wasn't often from launch. Uh, now, though, it's the engine that you'd really want in this pickup. As a result, this remains one of our preferred options in the pickup segment. And we're not alone. From Alaska to the Sahara to the Australian Outback, this is the vehicle of choice for people who need to get the job done. Drive one and you'll see why. <laughs>